Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on this busy Wednesday night. I'm Lindsay Davis in for David. We begin tonight with chilling new details about the mass shooting suspect charged with seven counts of murder at the 4th of July parade in Highland Park, Illinois, with more charges on the way. Today, the sheriff revealed the alleged gunman was considering a second attack that same day. 21-year-old Robert Cremo appeared in court today, barely looking up, showing no emotion as names of the victims were read out loud. The state attorney says Cremo confessed to opening fire on the crowd. Authorities say he used a Smith & Wesson semi-automatic rifle, firing more than 80 rounds from a rooftop, emptying nearly three magazines. They say he told them that he dressed like a woman so that he wouldn't be recognized while making his escape. Authorities say he dropped his rifle during the getaway. Police say he then drove to Madison, Wisconsin, where he thought about attacking the crowd at another celebration. Investigators still say they have no clear motive. There are reports that the suspect had a troubled past, including an attempted suicide and threats to kill his family. And yet he still passed four background checks to buy five guns. And we're now learning his father will also be investigated. ABC's Alex Perez is in Highland Park and leads us off. Today, before a judge, accused 4th of July killer Robert Cremo denied bail. Prosecutors say he has confessed to the horrific crime. His statement was voluntary. He went into details about what he had done. Uh, he admitted to what he had done. They say Cremo dressed in women's clothes, covered his distinctive facial tattoos with makeup, and climbed a fire escape to the perch where he used an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle to rain down terror on his innocent victims. Amid the chaos, police say Cremo fled to neighboring Wisconsin, where they say he considered launching a second attack there on a celebration he drove by. It appears when he drove to Madison, he did see a celebration that was occurring in Madison, uh, and he seriously contemplated using the firearm he had in his vehicle to commit another shooting. Do you know how much ammunition he had at that point? On the uh, approximately 60 rounds. But according to police, Cremo abandoned the idea, believing he didn't have time to plan it. <laughs> Investigators have determined he spent weeks mapping out the attack on the parade in Highland Park, but his motive still a mystery. His motivation isn't uh, necessarily clear. However, he uh, had some type of affinity towards the number four and seven, and inverse was seven four. Seven four, July fourth. What authorities say they do know is that Cremo was armed to the teeth. And tonight, they are grappling with serious questions about how he was able to obtain his weapons legally, given a series of red flags over the years. Police called to his home twice in 2019, once after they say he attempted suicide, and again five months later, after they say he threatened to kill his family, authorities confiscating a stash of more than a dozen knives, a dagger, and a sword. But none of that stopped Cremo from passing multiple background checks to legally purchasing a total of five firearms. For most of those purchases, he was under 21, which means he needed a parent to sign off on his firearm owner's ID, and state police say that's exactly what his father did. And police say authorities said they had insufficient basis to deny that application. Alex Perez joins us now from Highland Park. And Alex, lots of questions certainly now for that father. And tonight the Illinois State Police say they're looking into it. Yeah, Lindsay, state police here saying they've launched a criminal investigation to determine if the suspect's father could be held culpable. Now, in a statement tonight, the attorney for Cremo's parents is saying in part, quote, none of us know exactly what's going on with our children all of the time. This family was no different. Lindsay.